What's up developers, it's Dari here and welcome back to a new video where we're going to continue on with the 6th episode of our Filament PHP series. I don't want to make any changes to the product resource that we created since the only thing that we need to configure right here are the relationships which we will do in another episode. And what I want to do right now is to basically navigate to the CLI and I want to create a new resource. So let's say PHP artisan make me a filament dash resource. Now let's name it brand. All right, well, let's navigate back to PHP storm. Let's open the sidebar again because we're going to work in our brand resource class. Now, just like the product resource, I want to define a couple properties first. So let's go right under our navigation icon property and let's define a protected static string named navigation sort. In filament PHP, a navigation sort is a property that defines the order in which a resource appears in the navigation menu. Resources with a lower navigation sort value will appear higher in the menu. And when two or more resources have the same navigation sort value, they will be sorted alphabetically. If I comment out this line and navigate to the browser, refresh it, you will see that we have created a brands tab, which is fine. But let's navigate back to PHP Storm for a moment and let's actually group it inside our shop tab. So let's say protected static string navigation group is equal to shop. If we navigate back to Google Chrome and refresh it, you will see that brands have been placed above products. But the actual products that you have in a shop are way more important than the brand. So I rather want to place the products at the top of my list. And that's what we can do through the navigation sort, where we simply need to add an integer value of the sort. And obviously this is not a string, it is an int. That the navigation sort of our brand resource is one. And if we navigate back to Google Chrome and refresh it, you will see that brands have been placed down. But I want my products tab to be the first tab that users see. So to fix that, we can navigate back to PHP Storm, copy our navigation sort, Let's navigate to our product resource and let's place it right below our navigation group and let's change the source to zero. All right, now let's open our brand resource again and let's start off with our table method right here where we're going to define the columns. The first column that I want to show is the text column, which is for the name column. Then I'm going to change the searchable method to it and I'm also going to change the sortable method to it. Then I have a second column, which is also a text column. The column name will be URL. And I want to change the label because I want it to be more clearer to the user what type of URL is needed. So let's add the uh, label method and let's say website URL. And now this value is sortable and it's also searchable. Then I want to add another column, which is a color column, because I want to show the primary hex color of a brand. So let's add the column name, which will be primary hex. The primary hex has a label because it needs to be a bit more clearer than primary hex of primary color. We have an icon column, which is for the is visible. So basically the visibility, which is a Boolean. It is sortable and it has a label of visibility. The final column that I want to add is the is a text column, which is for the updated underscore ads. So let's change the date method to it and let's make it sortable as well. All right. If we navigate to the browser and refresh it, click on the brands tab, you will see that our brands table has been defined and it looks pretty nice, right? Now let's move on to creating and updating a brand. So let's click on new brand and we need to define this page. Let's navigate back to PHP Storm. Let's scroll up in our schema. I want to create a group where I then want to chain another schema to it, pass in an array where I want to define a section. Now the section will not have a name, but we're simply going to define a couple fields inside of it. So let's say text input for our name column. I'm going to chain a couple methods to it. The first one is required. 
Well, let's actually navigate to the project resource because it will have the same methods changed to it as the name column right here. And I don't want to rewrite all this code. So let's chain it right here. All right. Then we have our slug. So let's make another text input named slug. The slug will be disabled. The slug will also be dehydrated. And I've covered all these methods in the previous episode, which I will link in the description down below if you want to watch it. The slug is also required, obviously, and it needs to be unique. Now then we need to define the URL. So let's say text input, let's make a URL. We're going to change the label again to website URL. We're going to change the required method to it because the website URL needs to be required. It needs to be unique as well. And it has a column span of full. Now there's one more field that I want to define inside this section, which is the markdown editor for the description. And this one also needs to have a column span of full. Now we have added a column span for two of our fields. So what we need to do is basically chain the columns method of two on our section right here. Now, if we navigate to the browser and refresh it, you'll see that we have created pretty much the same panel of creating products, which is all right. Now let's create a brand again. All right, because we're going to create a group right next to it. So let's go right below the column span and a comma where we're going to define a new group where the name will be empty, where we're going to chain the schema method on it, pass in an array and hit enter. Now in here, we're simply going to create a new section. The section name will be status and we're going to chain the schema method on it again, where we're going to pass in an array, same structure over and over again. Let's navigate back to Google Chrome and refresh it. And you will see that the status section have been placed right next to the first section that we have created. Now let's quickly define two fields right here. The first one will be a toggle. The toggle name will be is underscore visible. We're going to chain the label method to it for the visibility. We have a helper text of enable or disable brand visibility. And we're going to chain the default method to it, which is true. And I made a typo right here. We're going to create one more group and section right below of it, where we're going to chain the schema method array, which will be a section. The section name will be color, where we're going to chain the schema method to it. In here, we're going to create a color picker with the name of primary underscore hex. And then we're going to change the label method to it to rename it to primary color. All right. Now let's navigate back to the browser and refresh it. And this looks pretty cool. Let's create a new brand. Let's say code with Dari. The website URL will be www.codewithdari.com. The description as well. And the primary color will be, let's say, red. Now let's click on create. As you can see, our product has been created. So let's navigate back to the brand's overview. Now, up until this point, we haven't really covered what we were supposed to do in this chapter. What I want to do right now is focus on a couple actions. And the first one is opening a view or a specific brand. So let's navigate back to PHP Storm and let's scroll down inside the table method where you will find a, where you will find a actions method. By default, you will see that one action has been defined, which is the edit action. Now this action is the button that you will see right here to the right of every single row. Once you click on it, you will be redirected through an action to the edit page. So let's add another action right here. Let's navigate to PHP Storm and right above of it, we're going to create a view action. And let's pull in filament backslash tables backslash actions, where we're going to use the make method again and add a comma right after it. If we navigate back to the browser, click on brands again and refresh it, 
you will see that we have added a view button right next to our edit button. And once we click on one, it will open a model where you can view the brand. And you even have the option to toggle checkboxes right here. Now next to the view and edit action, it allows one more, which honestly speaks for itself, since you should also have the option to delete a resource. So let's say delete action. Well, let's once again pull in filament table actions, call the make method, navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh the page, where you will see that it has added the delete button right next to it. If we delete our most recent brand and confirm it, you will see that we have been prompted with a message saying that our row has been deleted. Now filament PHP wouldn't be filament PHP if it does not let you add tons of customizations to it. By default, the row axes are rendered at the final cell of each row. It even allows you to add it to the left of the table. So right after the array inside the action method, we're gonna add a comma, where we're gonna define the position, which will be set equal to the action's position before columns. So let's pull it in. All right, let's navigate back to Google Chrome and refresh it, where you will see that it has been placed to the left side of the table. Now, I don't see a world where I would use this, but it is good to be aware of the customizations you can add. So let's navigate back to PHP Storm and let's get rid of it because I don't want to use it. Now, having these options per row is actually pretty cool, right? View, edit, and delete. But imagine a table with tons of data. This can be quite annoying. Filament PHP allows you to group these actions together. So let's see how this works on the product resource. Let's open it, scroll to the bottom to our, where is it? Actions method. Uh, let's get rid of our added action. We're gonna call the action group, pass in an array of the actions that we want to add right here. So let's first say view action. Then we have the edit action. And finally, we have the delete action. Now let's navigate to the browser. Or let's click on products. And right here, you will see that we have grouped the actions in a dropdown, which is pretty cool. Now, before I wrap up this video, I want to quickly copy the actions that we have, navigate to our brand resource, and replace it with the action method that we have defined right here. And if you navigate back to Google Chrome, click on brands, you will see that it has been replaced with a dropdown as well. For now, I want to wrap up this video where we have defined a new resource. We talked about actions and we have grouped actions. Now this was it for today's video. If you enjoyed the content and you want to see more, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.